Myanmar's neighbors are intensifying efforts to resolve the crisis in the country. The military-appointed foreign minister is said to be in Bangkok for talks. As protesters in Myanmar keep up pressure on embassies in Yangon, a flurry of diplomatic activity is taking place in Thailand. Indonesia's foreign minister is in Bangkok for talks with her Thai counterpart, hours after cancelling a trip to Myanmar. It would have made her the first foreign envoy to visit since the coup. After taking into account the current development and following the consultation with a number of other ASEAN countries, this is not the ideal time to conduct a visit to Myanmar. Protests on the ground continue. In Mandalay, protesters have marched holding up signs of support for elected lawmakers. The atmosphere in the city remains tense, nearly a week after two protesters were shot dead by security forces. In Doyai, ethnic groups formed a column of thousands moving through the city streets. <laughs> While in other places, people are getting creative, like these villagers riding elephants to rallies. There are also mounting concerns about the economic impact of the nationwide protests. A strict new limit on daily cash withdrawals at some banks has fueled rumours of a money shortage. Private banks remain mostly closed in the commercial hub of Yangon. May Wong joins us live from Bangkok for more. May, what does the Myanmar minister's visit to Thailand signal? It simply goes to show that Myanmar is listening, Myanmar is aware, and Myanmar is engaging. These are just clear signs that they know the criticisms that are coming from the global community. And the fact is the foreign minister from Myanmar could have done this via video conferencing, but yet he didn't, even though it came under very harsh, harsh conditions in terms of the ministers not wanting to confirm this particular meeting, but yet the meeting was held even though they had it done very quickly behind closed doors. So it only goes to show you that they want to really try to find a resolution to all of this. And you know as well that Thailand is a very close neighbour. Both Thailand as well as Myanmar share a land border. And that's the reason why there is a lot at stake for Thailand. For example, if the violence continues to grow in Myanmar because of the protests, you can just imagine the fact that the spillover effect not just from exiles or refugees wanting to cross over into Thailand will pose a major problem for this country. And that's the reason why we're seeing this trilateral kind of a dialogue going on. Well, looking at a broader picture then, uh, May, is ASEAN's non-interference policy an obstacle, in fact, to coordinated action here? Not at all, to be honest with you. I've spoken to a number of people. In fact, they see it as a positive move, a good sign, simply because this can be seen as a preparatory meeting to get ready for the ASEAN special meeting among the foreign ministers. You know that Malaysia as well as Indonesia, they've been trying to set up this meeting. So with the meeting today of the three ministers of Thailand, Indonesia, as well as Myanmar, that would only show the fact that both sides are exchanging information. They're having a dialogue within the ASEAN family and also how to take this forward and when they might be able to hold that meeting with all the regional foreign ministers. Now, also, you can expect that during that meeting, the Indonesia as well as the Thailand foreign ministers would impress upon the Myanmar foreign minister that, number one, the military coup cannot go beyond one year and that they have to keep to their word. Another point is they must not exert any more violence against the civilian protesters back in Myanmar. And third of all, obviously, for the Myanmar military to release Aung San Suu Kyi as well as all the other detainees. So these will be the messages that they would impress upon the Myanmar foreign minister for him to bring it back to the military generals back home and see how this can be resolved because this really puts ASEAN at stake with its credibility, with its reputation, as well as with the unity of this ASEAN community. Yeah, it certainly does. May Wong there speaking to us from Bangkok. Now let's uh, speak to Leong Waikit. He's been following developments closely as well. Waikit, the army has revoked the state councillor's office. Uh, tell us what that means and what the implications are.
Well, Steve, that's based on a leaked memo that's been confirmed by local media. Uh, this can really be seen as the Myanmar army taking yet another concrete step to ensure that Ms. Aung San Suu Kyi does not return to power, does not rule Myanmar. Because in the very first place, Ms. Suu Kyi has been barred from being president because when the constitution writ was, uh, when the constitution writ, uh, Excuse me. When the 2008 constitution was written by the army, there was a clause that bars anyone who, with a foreign family member from being president. Um, Ms. Suu Kyi, of course, has her late husband uh, being a foreigner. But when she uh, won the elections in 2015, uh, her, her legal team combed through the, con the, constitu uh, the constitution and found... Uh, loopholes where they could tap on and, and therefore they created the role of a state councillor where she could ru uh, rule above the president. Of course, the Myanmar army could say that uh, this is them taking away what doesn't belong in the constitution, but that's not how the rest of the world would see it. I mean, the Myanmar army has always insisted that it seized power because of uh, electoral fraud. But in the last three weeks, its actions say a different story. Uh, progressively, we've been seeing how it's unveiled plan after plan against Ms. Suu Kyi. She's been charged with two charges now and she's been uh, uh, detained now. She's going to be appearing in court, set to be appearing in court uh, on March the 1st. So between now and then and beyond, the question really is what is next for uh, Ms. Suu Kyi?